when it's time to really just see what is gonna come out next. Personally, I really have to get it with some color on it and some movement on it right away. I'd like to say I know exactly what they're gonna look like, but I really don't. I lay down now may not even have anything to do with the final painting, but often it does. Sometimes this real sense of quick and random pain turns you on, uh, gets you connected, and for me personally, I have to get rid of the white. I grew up in an art studio. My father's a sculptor, so all around me were the smells and the textiles and the sense of project that comes with art making, but mainly the smells. So I always knew it was an interesting profession and it was kind of okay to be an artist, which is already a hurdle in a lot of households, that your parents would be really into it and supportive. And it was so, it was like the family business. Having said that, yes, it was a great artistic family, you also want to make your mark in a different way. And so music really also came to me in a really good way. A very strong sense of music entered my fiber. And I started learning piano pretty, pretty heavily and it, we got along <laughs> really well. But there's an industry and something that takes everything you have. It's hard to ha even have another hobby. So eventually, my art was a hobby at that point and the piano was serious. They just kind of switched. Uh, the art became now the real, the real energy that started to grab me. And then I could still enjoy playing the piano, have the piano near me with my art. And then it all made sense. Uh, the piano is a nice diversion. It's also a sense of a project. I think I'm a project type of person. I like a beginning and an end, and this sense of growth and completion, and learning music, painting a painting, even cooking. It's all very project based, and in that, uh, I, that is my nature. I'll learn some new music at the same time I'm going into a new body of work. So they kind of go hand in hand. Maybe by the time I'm finished with that body of work, I've learned a new Chopin etude or something. So I have some, a reason and a little like milestone. So, you know, if I play that song again, I'll remember, oh yeah, that's when I worked on those blue paintings. They really do go hand in hand like that. I think I needed to somewhat learn the hard way. I thought if you're gonna be a really good painter, this is not a time for a shortcut. So I did abandon a lot of ideas of what one school could offer, what was happening in my own dad's studio. I needed to go into areas where that particular kind of painting was born. So I went to school in Italy and I stared at things at first. I just, there's something that your eyes can do and just, just being near some of these great paintings was the, the thing that whetted the appetite. I didn't want to learn someone's style too well. But I thought this is, there's something about that learning the hard way. Then you know really the nitty gritty of historic materials, how to use them. And then if I fail, I would know it was, it was my own fault, but the people who I surrounded myself with and sought after were the real deal. 
you kind of want to enter the starving artist. It means you have nothing else to do. It makes you fierce in your point of view that this is for you. When you're a starving artist, you think that, oh, this is, you know, there's something tragic about it. So I did. I was in New York. I was working 10 jobs at a time, 15 of us living in a big old apartment. But I knew, I knew I was talented, and I knew that I'm going, there's something even at that time, I knew that this is probably going to work for me. I, I'm just feeling it. I know I'm getting, even at this funny stage, the kind of responses that you hope for. Then I was picked up by a pretty serious art dealer who is still the art dealer I am with today. And that's a life-changing event. It takes patience and a, a great sense of communication. My art dealing family, the Zugers, found me very young and they grew me and I probably was zero profitable for them those first years, but they knew that this, this is one of those opportunities for both of us. And that is a big part of the whole art circle, the art experience. Not just the making of it, but the commercing and the moving of it. And then finally, it ends up in a, in a home and the full circle has come to be. What is not in my repertoire right now is the very medium that put me in a really nice place as an artist, and that's working with pastels. I was a pastel artist for 15 years and really achieved a nice level of notoriety and expertise. Uh, the New York Pastel Society, I really found the, the light being green as I developed that skill. And in my own mind, I thought, well, I'm a pastel artist and this is how it's gonna be. I've arrived at a position with it where I know they're pretty good and they're getting better. And then as soon as that got pretty comfortable, I just started getting the itch to personally try their materials. The challenges that you have in art should always kind of be a grinding and burning desire. So sometimes you just go to the art supply store and find new materials and give them a whirl. I was jealous of artists that could be quick and free with pain. I just wanted to see what it felt like. So while I was working very tight with pretty traditional yet beautiful work, I, I just was envious of what does that feel like to move paint with three different or four different, a knife and a brayer and a brush at the same time and push that paint around. So they were just um, personal little, just get it out of your system. That's what these things were to begin with. Then I realized there is an art to them, a story to be told, beauty, that can be very abstract. And therefore those experiments started becoming really complete. And then in return, all the training I had as a traditional painter came right in to those contemporary paintings. The sense of building, the sense of a point of interest, of colors that fight each other or get along. I look like a very rangy painter, but that's just what I've allowed myself to be in a studio where anything you want can happen. That's kind of how I run my studio. That's the permission you give yourself as an artist to really go with how you feel. I would say all the paintings are for the joy and love of painting as an artist. You need to go on that personal journey to make the paintings have magic. It seems self-indulgent, but I pay it for myself first. And that is what makes a painting go from good to great. And people look for that. They might not even know they're looking for that, but they will respond when the artist really has found their calling. I try to make each painting a journey unto itself. Each one is its own story. Although I do paint in a series, I'll, I'll, I'll embrace, say, the color red or a heavy amount of geometry in a painting, and that'll run its course through a series of paintings. And that really is how you keep going. 
New ideas spring from a painting that you're currently working on. I have found a real nice body of paintings where I can paint beautiful realism right into, right into the fabric of a really contemporary piece. And that is an ongoing body of work, whether it be bocce balls or pears or things from a, or flowers. Flowers are still a huge repertoire. A huge part of my painting career are still flowers, and they don't need to be pretty pretty. Now they're pop and they're expressive and they're in your face and they're happy. You can tell when an artist has been engaged and physical by the way the paint has been applied. The start of the painting is when I have that real energy going on. Now, that would be a one-dimensional painting. Sometimes that's just too much, it's chaos. And so then I start to bring a painting together with geometry, optical illusion, other materials that have weight. Gold or silver leaf in a painting, that feels heavy. I'll use glazes, which is like a transparent paint. That can make an area feel light and very atmospheric. So even though I'm speaking kind of metaphorically, they, there are literal versions of what I'm saying between lightness and heaviness, geometry and chaos. Almost every one of my paintings by the end of it has all these ingredients. I'm kind of a slow moving artist in the sense that I'm not done with those themes yet. Uh, as new themes come up, motifs in your art, you sometimes say goodbye to old ones. I love squares, so I had so many squares as a theme, and now I think I'm able to move on. You know, that's just one example. But when something new comes in, you can say goodbye to something old in a painting. And you should. You should. If it goes along the same stages as it is now, it's a good future. Meaning, I haven't done one of these drastic high and lows. Every stage I've done has been like a nice staircase, gradually moving into a more critical success, yes, higher prices, work that really I'm happy about and, and proud of. A scary thing is when all of a sudden you have super popularity and then sadly what can come the next year is super unpopularity. Uh, if you're going to go to that super popular, you can have an amazing ride and maybe you deserve it for the rest of your life because you're that good. I am enjoying my level of advancement. It really feels me, I'm a Taurus, we're, you know, we kind of like to just move kind of slowly along this path. So if it just continues, the work is already getting bigger and I get bigger jobs all over the world now. So I like how it's progressing. I don't want to be afraid of my future. I want to feel like I, it's in my, abilities. I've had an unusually charmed art life up to now. It's unusual to be in the hands of an art family for this long with this track record of embracing art and success. So uh, I know that I've had a really good ride up to this point. Everything I do, they're going to embrace or they're going to give it a whirl. Uh, maybe it's all not going to be as strong as other pieces. The twists and turns usually come with people. You know, people have come in and out of my studio. I go to my art as my steadying device in life. And that makes me able to be a good friend to people, a good partner, a good dog owner. If you're in the talent industry and you go to there as your fuel and your sense of balance, then everything else that comes in life it's pretty negotiable, it's pretty easy.